Okay, uh, hello everyone. Um, we're here. It's uh, nine o'clock in Korea and we're starting today's um, Etiquette live stream. Let me just put my fan down. Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, it's me, Eric, and today we've got a very special guest. We've got my friend Jock here, who's a teacher. Um, he's been teaching, well, he'll tell you all about his experience, but he's a teacher and he's also got a, a YouTube channel called Explore English. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about teaching English and also his experience. Okay, so first um, things first, hello everyone. If you're here, say hello in the comments and, we, and if you have any questions, Martin is there first. Hi Martin, it's a pleasure having you. Um, sorry, I've been a bit busy this week, so I haven't been like, uh, cons uh, like watching a lot of, um, I I've watched your last video, but I feel like my comment wasn't good enough, but I'll pick it back up this week. Um, Martin, how are you doing? We're doing great. Um, but next, let's go to our guest for today, Jock. Hi, Jock. Hey, Eric. How are you, man? I'm excellent. It's so nice to talk with you. Okay, so um, I, I'm not sure if... Um, if uh, everybody knows you, but um, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Yes, um, guys, my name is Jacques Daniel de Kok, my full name. Um, when I worked in Korea, a lot of people struggled to pronounce Jacques. So I took on the alias first was um, Jack, and then it's Daniel. And recently, I just found that teacher Daniel works the best. So my real name is Jacques Daniel. Um, you can call me Shark, you can call me Daniel, you can call me Teacher Daniel, you can call me Your Majesty. <laughs> it's fine with me, anything yeah. you want. Um, yeah, so um, I was an English teacher in South Korea for about five years, and for the last year and a half, I've been um, teaching Chinese kids and um, adults online. And um, yes, uh, I really enjoy English. I always tell students that the thing that brings me back to that is that, Eric, you'll probably know as well, that sparkle in the eye as soon as somebody snaps what you taught them. Mm. Uh, it's like a drug. You chase that the whole time. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, and Eric and I met when I was in South Korea. Um, I actually went through my Facebook photos. I have a very, some very embarrassing photos of us dancing in the streets of Korea. Yeah. Um, oh. Surprise. So, yeah, good. To, but those were good times. Though. We had a lot of fun. So. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting. I still remember, um, uh, Jock, uh, because we went on this camp together. There's a there's a special camp where uh, it's for South Africans, but anyone can go. It's held every spring in Korea. They haven't done it for the last couple of years. But I remember you were there, and you were one of the first people. Um, I know that uh, th I knew that started making YouTube videos and I remember you told me mm. oh yeah I made this one video about being in Korea and I thought wow that's kind of kind of cool you know so you were one of the first people yeah. that actually exposed me to YouTube a long time ago oh thanks man no um, it's it's a uh, um, YouTube's a lot of fun so uh, I think what's what the the best thing about YouTube is just putting yourself out there um, but you should you should also have a thick skin because I mean we all know the trolls that love, mm. yeah. <laughs> especially as creators. You know you get those people, but you got to take it with a grain of salt. But overall, I mean it's why we do what we do. I love it as well. Mm. So, well, I think today we're going to talk a lot about you know um, your experience as a teacher and also teaching English. You know some of the things you've done and what you want to mm. do in the future. I think especially today. Um, I feel like the focus, uh, what I want to focus on is looking towards the future. And that's something very, that, that uh, we're going to talk about what you're doing is focusing on the future, but that's what I want to talk about. Uh, Martin asks, uh, what's your YouTube link? Martin, I'll put the link to his channel in the description as soon as we're done. Um, uh, I'll put it there for you to check out, but it's Explore English. Okay, now, Jock, um, so you came to Korea. How long were you in Korea for? Uh, five years arrived in 2011 and um, left in 2016. And uh, what so is? People take with a break. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it, you. Um, so and then afterwards you went back to South Africa with your wife and you had some some beautiful children. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, that that's the main reason we ended up coming back is. Um, you know, we had Alexander, my oldest son, was born in um, South Korea, uh, which oh. was an adventure, which is an adventure in itself. 
Mm. Um, but uh, we realized after six months, you know, um, it's not like going to a uh, a 7-Eleven or a, um, a one of these marts in Korea and just not knowing how to order coffee. I mean, you've got your kid's life that you... And we really pushed our Korean to the furthest extent and tried to communicate in as much Korean as we can, could. But, you know, we couldn't... We didn't know as much. We weren't that great at um, uh, communicating in English, like conversational Korean. So we said we're way out of our league here. Um, and it's not our life, it's our child's life we have in our hands as well. And then we decided, you know what, um, let's head back home. Korea's been good. And um, yeah, so we came back. And um, we've been back in South Africa. Um, the first, I think the first six months were scary. Yeah, here, oh, oh, uh, just people... getting back home. Oh, what do they What do they call that experience? Uh, by the way, I just want to say, hi, Alsa. Alsa, it's so good to see you, as always. Alsa is uh, one of our first viewers that's always here. And Migum, Migum, I'm glad that you made this one. Um, I hope you had a beautiful day today. Today was a fantastic day here in South Korea, the longest day of the year. Uh, guys, if you have any topics you would like to talk about, if you have any questions, Put it in the this, uh, in the comments below. You you know the drill. Um, okay, so Jock, um, th there's a there's a word. What is that word we say? Um, culture shock. Uh, well, Rever reverse. In this, in reverse culture shock. Reverse yeah. culture shock, and that happens a lot when when um, you know, especially when expats go and work in another country. You were in South Korea for uh, five years, mm. and then oh, now yeah. you go back to South Africa, and I cannot even imagine. Like I can go back for a holiday, but. Like, yeah, but then you go as a tourist. Yeah, but but how does it feel going in? Oh, by the way, um, Martin says it was summer solstice today. Hope you had, had a lovely day. Yeah, Martin, uh, was a fantastic day today. Um, now, Jock, sorry. Um, uh, what what was the most difficult to get into? Like, what was the reverse culture shock? Well, the thing is, I think uh, for some of your viewers who don't know about culture shock or thinking about going abroad and teaching abroad, um, I think my, my culture shock is best described as follows. We flew from South Africa to Hong Kong, connected with a flight and went to, um, uh, to Seoul. And I remember it felt like you were going deeper and deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole, the more... First, there was Hong Kong Airport, which is actually so international, but mm. everything was strange. The brands, yeah. the fact that there were squiggly lines and everything, yeah. and you can't read. Um, then you get to Seoul, and it's like everything looks the same. But now, if you take um, Cantonese or Mandarin, you put it next to Korea. And if I put the two next to each other now, it's like night and day. Yeah. And then... <laughs> And um, you can't understand what anybody's saying, even though the people at um, Incheon Airport in Seoul are fluent in English. Mm. Um, you just on your nerves and you get on this bus and um, this older gentleman is trying to help you, but you can't understand what he's saying. You just rattle. And it takes you a good, I'd say, yeah, a good three months just to settle in everything and get mm. like relaxed. Yeah. I mean, You've been in Korea for so long that I hardly ever doubt if you can remember that. I, <laughs> I actually I do. I'm uh, I'm busy writing an article for a newspaper. Oh really? Um, because this is my tenth year in Korea, so I'm oh. actually doing. Oh, congratulations, man! Yeah, I'm I'm doing I'm I'm writing an article about you know all my time in Korea. So um, I I I that's one of the clearest things I remember is coming to Korea and for for those first couple of months just. You know, getting used to everything, and I think there are some sp there are some unicorns out there, people that just adapt very quickly, and it's very natural yeah, for them. Yeah. But I feel like maybe as South Africans, it's very difficult to to go into a, a foreign country and doing that. Um, yeah. yeah um, so I, yeah. I th sorry, I just, just want to add this as well. I think the main thing for South Africans is the fact that you know we're right at the bottom, and we've got. I mean, we know about Western culture. Yeah. Like yeah. experiencing it, we don't have like a Korea town or a mm. as big as like in all cities we have a Chinatown. Mm. Um, so you know it's very um, South Africa is very secluded in its own way when it comes to that from a physical point of view. Mm. Uh, but yeah, and then after three months you get used to it, and then you come back. But you come back as you're coming back at the moment, which is as a tourist. 
And then when you finally make the move back, you get reverse culture shock where you're yeah. used to Korea, but now you need to adapt to everything you did here. Yeah, and uh, it's going back to basics. Again. Well, this is what I'm very interested in because, uh, yeah, Migam says here, wow, five years and 10 years sounds like a lot. Actually, it is a lot, Migam. Um, I think um, uh, in, in, in general, uh, most teachers that come here, they stay for maybe two, three years and then they go back home to study or find a new mm -hmm. job because it's very difficult. Once you become an expat, the, the longer you stay it, as an expat, it's difficult to transition back to home. And that's why I'm so interested in what Jock's going to talk about now. It's um, the reverse culture shock because I've got some ideas of what, I, what I'm afraid of. But wh what was difficult for you to adapt back to South African life? Okay, I think the first thing that is difficult to um, adapt to, especially working in another country, and um, Eric, I think you're going to have a big laugh when I say this, is the fact that everybody all of a sudden understands you. <laughs> That's the first thing. So, mm. <laughs> you know, when you're in Korea, not mm. all people are that fluent and at the mm. speed at which we speak English, they can't, not everybody, I'd say like a good 5% can keep mm. up with uh, yeah. with the um, speed of English we usually speak at. Yeah. But for, you know, a, a middle school or elementary kid, if we speak at the speed we're speaking now, mm. they'll pick up every second word. Yeah. And you get used to that. You know, the subway, you just let rip and you talk. Uh. You know, and you get used to this, um, I, it's the wrong way of saying it, but almost like a semi, a semi God complex where people don't understand you. It's, uh. it's, you're, you're a little bit different. And yeah. then when you get back, yeah. you've got to learn that off really quickly. Ah, uh, I see. You know, it's not, there's no, there's nothing, there's no option where it's like, oh, look at that dude over there. You can't the, do the, that. The guy you understands. Know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I totally understand that because... Yeah, like you said, it's not a God complex, but you, you kind of, you, you don't care anymore because in general, if, if you're talking with a friend uh, at, at just a natural, like a quick, a, a quick speed, you know, um, mm -hmm. most people won't pick it up. So you don't really care. But now if you go back home, everybody knows exactly what you're saying. But I also oh. think, you know, it's, it's the same. You'll also understand other people. Um, we've got a question. Our first question about teaching. And I think let, let's quickly do one question about teaching to get into this. Tetiana, hi. How are you today? Um, everyone, um, yeah, you know the drill. Put your questions in the comments below. Tell me, how, how did you spend your summer solstice? Um, Tetiana, she says, how, uh, how do Korean students differ? Um, that's fine, Tetiana. So um, I've had experience where I taught uh, South African students and then I came to South Korea. I've had some um, international students. Um, now, Jock, um, let me ask you this. as uh, How do you think Korean students differ from other students? Um, to be honest, Eric, I think that um, there's not that much... Look, I've taught South African, Chinese, and um, South Korean. The South mm. Korean and the Chinese are virtually about 95% similar. There's some differences in the way they pronounce words. For example, the Chinese tend to swallow their N, where the mm. Koreans don't have that much trouble pronouncing the letter N. Okay. As a quick example, hmm. uh, but other than that, other than that, um, it's very similar. It's just you need to take the culture into consideration hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, I remember the first time I taught Chinese students, I actually uh, bowed, and I realized. What? What happened? Oh. Sorry, lost. Sorry, lost you there. South Africa. Lost you there. It's the typical South African connection. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so you were saying. Um. So yeah. So they differ slightly, uh, but not a uh, 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 a lot uh, mm. compared to teaching. Um. Let's say South African and Chinese or South African and. Korean. Yeah, I, I think it's the cult cultural. Difference. There is a cultural aspect. So teaching in South Africa, the way that I would speak to South African students, because. Um, you know, I grew up with them. I understand very well how it is, you know, how I can communicate with them. Um, and I think um, th that that's the most difficult thing to explain, because when I came to Korea, the first couple of months, yeah, I would do my teacher thing. But I it was more difficult to connect with the students. And then, um, you know, as the more time I spent here, I could feel myself 
actually change the way in which I communicate with the students. Now, Korean students, how do they differ? Now, you've got to remember their culture. They, they also come from a Confucianist culture where they have to listen to authority. They're also more shy and they don't, they're very afraid of making mistakes, you know? So you get, you get shy students all across the world. That's, that's normal. But I feel like in Korea, there, there's more pressure that they don't want to make a mistake. Whereas in South Africa, for example, uh, the kids, you know, they don't care about, like they are shy kids, but they don't care about making mistakes as much. The, the, uh, it's, the risk isn't that high. Um, so um, Megum says, here, yeah, I think we can talk a little bit. Do you have any more ideas on that before I change to Megum's topic? Um. Um, I think the biggest um, uh, to to answer um, uh, the, the the question precisely, I'd say the biggest difference would be um, cultural difference from Koreans. But depending on continents, it can be uh, a similar. So I found that the like I said, the Chinese and the Koreans mm. who have taught for more than a year, there are a lot of similarities there compared to South Africa. Um, I also want to add when it comes to English um, uh, teaching. Um, Koreans are very strong in skill in reading skills and comp perhaps comprehension skills because from a very early age, a very young age, oh. they are trained for that. Where I feel um, it's it's not as strong in South Africa. In South Africa, I think speaking and listening and understanding um, or, or, oh. is is a lot stronger because kids grow up in that environment and they 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 watch a lot of television. Most of it is English, you know. And then uh, in Korea, obviously, everything around them is in uh, in Korean, and they don't speak to many people, but they're writing and they're reading really good. Uh, or not their writing, uh, I think not their writing, but their reading and comprehension is very good. So um, make sure that you write your instructions uh, on the board when you explain it. I have a couple of different ways that you explain it. Now, I want to move on. Actually, I could talk about this topic a long time. Tati Tatiana, thank you so much for this topic. Next, we have Migam. And Migam, you have a really good question here. She asks, do you change your teaching method when teaching EFL and ESL? Jock, always give it to the... Uh, yeah, just <laughs> you, you do this one, um, give me time to think, and then I'll give an answer. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, thanks so much, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, um, I think yes, most mm. definitely. Um, you know, with EFL, you... How can I put this? You tend to put yourself in the client's shoes, mm. where you've got to see it from their perspective, of how they're approaching the subject. You know, the, uh, Eric, the best example I had was in training, where in training, um, it, when I was doing my um, in-class TEFL training, my trainer could speak fluent Arabic, mm. and none of us in the class could. So she said, we're going to learn some Arabic words. And she, we had an Arabic class for five minutes. I was never as nervous in my life to stand up and repeat words back uh, with a guttural sound in Arabic hmm. and that taught me the fear that hmm. these students have hmm. and the fact that one should realize you should you should always be passionate you should always be um, supportive you should always be confident and instill confidence in your um, learners, because the biggest battle you have as a EFL teacher is the fact that you have to constantly uh, maintain that positivity. And I think that's why what the Korean government did and most like the uh, um, Chinese government did as well, they start these English lessons from a young age so that mm. students become really confident. Mm. And it's our job to, of course, teach them English, but instill these core positive values regarding the subject yeah. so that they can continue and build on their own. I'm 100% I'm, I, 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 I'm with you. First, I want to say, hi, mom. My mom's on. My mom says, uh, hello, Eric and guest. Interesting topic. Yeah, I think these questions are helping out a lot. Um, actually, uh, my mom lives in Hansby, so they're in South Africa. Oh, that's not too, that's that, not too far from us. That, that's not too far from Jock. Oh, where are you, Jock? 
Uh, I'm in George. In so. George. Okay, yeah, it's not that far. Yeah. Beautiful city. Okay, so here is my opinion, and it links exactly to what Jock says. Uh, the difference between EFL and ESL. I am much more demanding of EFL students. I will ask them questions. I will ask them to explain it over and over again until I get a, a, an answer that I think is good enough. I'm very demanding with the students. I expect a lot from them and I'll push them harder because I know that, you know, uh, I, I, I want them to uh, succeed and I want them to do well. Whereas when I go to my ESL students, I'm very forgiving. I give them more time to answer and I praise them a lot. Whereas with EFL students, I'll be like, give me an answer. Why? Why? What happened? With the ESL students, I'm like Mother Teresa. I'm like, oh, how was your day? And I give them time and I maybe I'll help them answer a little bit more. And whatever the answer is, if, if, it's, if I, th I feel like they're trying, I give them a lot of praise to build up their confidence. And that's exactly what Jock also said. Yeah, that's, ex that, that, that's, that's exactly it. So. Yeah. Um, well, uh, guys, if you have any questions, Miguel and Tetiana, thank you for these great questions. It made us think. Okay, now, Jock, back to you. Um, so, oh. you're back in South Africa. Um, uh, what are you busy with at the moment? Oh, by the way, guys, I've got a fantastic question I heard. Um, a great thing to ask someone if you're with them, a friend or on a date, you, you can ask him, what are you passionate about at this moment? And I think this is this is the question I want to ask you. So, um, what what are you busy with at the moment? What are you passionate about? Jeez, oh, Eric, um, it's you know like all good things, it starts off with a story. So I think you know, <laughs> guys, if you have a cup of coffee like I have in my Father's Day cup that I got today. By the um, way, Happy Father's Day! <laughs> um, I'll call my dad thanks, a little man. bit later. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, yeah, you know, I think um, once I got back, uh, like I said, we the, the first thing that kicked in was the culture shock. Because, uh, you know, you left I left South Africa as a newlywed man. Mm. Uh, I got married and then I went to South Korea. And I came back um, with, a with, uh, with a kid. And it's completely, life's completely different. You know, you, you don't see... Um, the baby chairs at the restaurant the same way you did five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that that changed. And the other thing is, the South Africa changed as well. You, I mean, you guys are going to find it so funny, but you know, I remember coming back with my wife, and when we left, you there was no such thing as putting data on your phone. You'd mm. use your airtime to mm. use for. Um, Facebook, etc. Yeah. When we got here, we bought a heck of a load, and the lady at the um, cell phone shop said, "Why are you, you just buy data?" And we're like, "What's data?" And then she mm. had to explain it to us because wow. it was included in the package. So, mm. um, and um, you know, I got back and then got used to that, and then um, you know, from a young age, my father always said, you know, he wants to. Um, he wants me to start up my own business because um, there are a lot of perks to it as well. And, mm. um, you know, we, uh, him and I started doing research. And I mean, if I say research, I'm 31, 32, 33. Yeah, we've got about nine or eight folders that I'm seeing here in front of me worth of research that wow. we did. And we dug deep, you know, we uh, went into, um, we, we called up um, professors at universities who have studied on this field, um, in the field of starting up a language school or doing something that I did in Korea in South Africa. Mm. But the thing is, most South Africans skill. speak. So how are you going to use that skill here? Yeah. Mm. Um, so we started off with the idea of starting up a language school. And um, yeah, we did research, and within the first three months, we realized there's no way that this is going to work, um, mm. simply because of the uh, legality and the red tape behind starting a language school. Um, that's very, very intense, and Department of Education and reviews and all types of things. Mm. Guys, starting a language school is not e easy. A lot of respect to the people who run and manage language schools. It's not an easy job. Um, and um, we thought to ourselves, you know, also because of our location in George, which is in the garden route, 
It's not in one of the biggest cities in South Africa. Mm. And then what we said was, um, let's look at alternatives to what we're doing. And I started looking at starting. My, uh, I started looking at um, starting up my own private um, English online classes. Okay. Um, that took about another three months, and we realized that people who study online aren't interested in a premium product that we were going to do. Mm. They were more interested in doing it cheaply. Mm. Uh, so then we said to ourselves, okay, right, now we've got to start it again. And it was at this time where, you know, I started doing freelance tour guiding work. And, uh, and I was sitting talking to my dad one evening, and he said, well, why don't we merge language learning and... Well, there it goes again. <laughs> okay. So it should come back on. Ah, okay. There we go. It's back on. Right. Um, All right. Ah, sorry. My, um, I just need to quickly go. No. So. Ah, why? Does that? Okay. Skip. No problem. It's okay. Anyway, it's not going to show me for a little bit until I figure this out. Um, so basically, um, before I continue, um, I just want to say uh, hi, Naza. It's so good to see you, Tetiana. Um, I'm very forgiving to, especially to all the viewers. My dad's here. Dad, um, a happy Father's Day, and. Um, then we've got Vahid, you're back again. Um, came here to earn for my living. I'm Geodist. Yeah, it's so good to see you again, Vahid. Um, okay, now, um, sorry, I'll, I'll go back to you. Bad internet's a plague in some parts. No, what, what's happening now is it's up mine because um, it's supposed to. Uh, Come on. Nah, it's not doing it right now. Okay. Um, Let's see. Um, okay, so the, the thing is, you know, I think as as people, we need to plan ahead and we've got to start um, course correcting. Course correcting is like, uh, I hope you guys are okay with not seeing me. I'll try and fix it soon. Um, so course correcting is once you hit a, a problem, you course correct and you, you try and solve it, you know. And I think the worst thing that people yes, do yeah. is as soon as they hit a major problem they they either try and continue doing the same thing uh, for too long or they stop doing anything completely and they just you know they they uh, they they give up but what you're doing is yeah. you you try something it doesn't work and you try and do something else okay so um now yeah. um you said that so you were doing um you were doing tours and english teaching and now you want yeah. to merge yeah, the yeah. two um, before we yes. go on to that, uh, before we start yes. with that, we've got one question here from um, Naza, and Naza is one of my VIP viewers. Um, I have to focus oh. on their answer oh, hey, question first. Um, Naza asks, um, tell us a bit about the flipped classroom. Uh, I can talk a bit about it, but let me give it up to you, Jock. Uh, what do you know about the flipped classroom? Eric, I'm going to be dead honest my students i'm a teacher i am not the internet i you can actually tell okay it, 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 well well uh, actually i've never heard of it okay the the flip classroom actually this happens to me a lot too uh, um and the the way that you dealt with it is perfect because you basically say you know i, I don't know and that happens to me a flip classroom is basically i wish this
Ah, okay. Thank you, Naza. Okay, guys, I was just explaining everything and only Jar could hear me. Ah, oh, that's so embarrassing. Okay, so basically, I was just, uh, Jock, I need to explain it again. Nobody could hear me. I just saw it now. Sorry, everyone. Um, okay. Here's the thing. The, how does a normal classroom work? It's um, basically you go into the classroom. First, you present the topic. Uh, you talk about the vocabulary and you, uh, you pre-teach. You get the students ready and you explain the topic. Then you have an activity that you do with the students where they practice the skill and they interact with the... Hey, Gloria, so good to see you. Um, uh, so then they interact with the material and the knowledge that they've learned. After that, you do a review and you give them homework. Um, now, what a flip classroom is, is just the inverter of the, that. First, you give your students vocabulary. You explain some of the points. You can give them some grammar examples so that they can prepare before they come to the classroom. Then when they come to the classroom, you can focus on the skills that they can practice so you can do more activities. And that is something that I'm using in my online classrooms classrooms right now is I send the students um, I send the students um, the information before class. I send them a short video. I send them homework. They prepare that. So when they come to class, they know exactly what is expected of them. Okay. Um, I hope that helps. Um, now, uh, before Martin, before I ask your questions, everyone, thank you so much for your advice. I'm sorry you can't see my my very red face right now. Uh, but let's quickly go back to Jock. Jock, sorry, I've been talking for so long. And, uh, no, no, no. Uh, so, um, back to you. Um, no. So, uh, tell uh, tell us what um, what you did. So you said you you you're taking um, uh, teaching English and uh, uh, you know uh, tour tour being a tour guide and putting it together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So um, basically, I realized, or you know, my as I said, my old man and I sat down. My dad and I sat down, and we had a chat, and he said, "Why don't we merge the two? So we started looking into doing tours and learning language and how will we and then the big question popped up and we touched it earlier but this is really important it's so important that you know i'm going to say a little prayer that the internet doesn't cut out again the big thing for us at the end of the day when it came to um this learning of english is how can we implement it and how can we use it to the best of our advantage <clears throat> yeah okay and uh, sorry just just checking if you're still there so sorry i can't see your face so um so what we realized is that we should go back on what we what what we've experienced before and this like i said it's something that you focused on as well um koreans were really good at reading and comprehension um, and um, you know about, about answering questions you said that earlier correct i just want to double check that's what you said yeah yeah so very, koreans are very yeah. good with uh, uh, reading and comprehension yes now in the travel that i did abroad you know as one does when you live in asia i realized that this was kind of a common trend in most countries and all of them were good with this, but they were good at learning things as like um, in a parrot style, which one needs every now and then. But when it came to the creative use of learning English, mm. they struggled a bit. And what I then realized most of all was um, conversation. And then I started realizing there's a big, big, big gap when it comes to conversational English. Um, because what happens is a lot of students um, that I taught tend to repeat the same things over and over and over because that's the only things that they knew. They couldn't use what they learned and put it and give it over to you in a different, more um, dynamic way. Um, and I partly, you know, blame the education system for this. 
because it had to be more diverse. I mean, I was part of this problem as well. And I thought to myself, this is something that I want to tackle. And again, you know, files and files of research and got to the point where I realized I've got to do something about it. So I started up um, Explore English, but did the conversational English part and said that we are not going to focus on anything else except conversational English. And that's what we've been doing. Now, to say that we can focus on the conversational English is great, but how do we make it fun? How do we create that, what we said earlier, how do we create that um, fun way of learning and people wanting to continue learning it over and over and over? And we thought the best way to do that was by doing a tour. So basically, we put together these tours where you travel to South Africa, uh, you spend some time um, in a very like chilled out classroom atmosphere, think friends, mm. where people would sit back and, um, uh, you know, with a coffee, that type of no, 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 no school desks, no call buildings, nothing, just a very super relaxed way. And you go through some basic conversational English examples and elements and techniques and skills. Um, and then we use these skills and go on tour. And while you go on tour, um, you actually interact with locals who have been prepped before that I will be arriving with some non-English speaking folk who will be practicing their English. So let's say, for example, the one module will be booking, uh, a booking accommodation or checking in at your hotel. When myself and the group of, let's say, seven arrive at the hotel, We'll walk in, but I'll tell one of the students, it's your turn, let's start. Mm. And then they have to check everybody in. Of course, it's nerve wracking, but they've got the support of all their classmates mm. who are going through the same thing. And I'm always there as a backup. Uh, okay. And Eric, I'm going to, Eric, I'm going to be honest. We, um, we've pitched this to the travel industry, uh, to the language learning industry and you know, phenomenal feedback. And, you know, the thing is, is that it's been a, you know, a pre-COVID-19, um, you know, things changed a lot, and I'll get to that a bit later, but pre-COVID-19, it was just the response we got was phenomenal. I think the biggest compliment that we got was where somebody said that, you know, Jacques, what you and um, your dad are putting together and the way you're approaching this is you're kind of doing to... Uh, you, you're kind of flipping the whole industry. Oh, I can see you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I figured it I out. Can flip the, <laughs> uh. I can, I, we, we're flipping the whole language industry um, like the Macintosh flipped computers. Uh, mm. We've seen as pioneers. And for me, that was probably the most flattering compliment I got. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to pause. I'm, I'm going to pause there for a second because I, I quickly want to get. We've gotten a lot of things. Um, thank you, everyone, for telling me about this sound. Okay. First off, NASA, you're genius. You know it. Um, NASA said so with a flipped classroom. And I, NASA, you asked this question, but you already knew the answer. Um, so a flipped classroom is where. Um, and I wish I said this, but I didn't. Basically, NASA says that with a flipped classroom, when you give students the opportunity to practice lower level thinking, lowest thinking skills. So the simple oh. skills like uh, memorizing or learning the vocabulary or just uh, becoming used to the grammar. So they learn that first and then they learn the higher level skills uh, the, um, uh, in the classroom. Uh, HOT, uh, it stands for high order thinking skills, right? Am I right? Naza, I hope so. So high order thinking skills where they can actually practice with their friends. Okay, uh, Elsa says, I can't hear you. It's okay now. Megum says, do you mean teaching situational English, but in real life? Um, before we get to that, I just want to yes. say, Vahid, hi Vahid, uh, learning English myself, but from internet and watching movies. Um, but I don't know my English level. I always watch movies for advanced level. That's really good. I think some people, you know, if uh, a lot of people watch like, let's say, for example, Friends, and they watch it with subtitles and then without subtitles. And you can also practice saying the 
the, the repeating the sentences they use, especially if it's like that. And then uh, Vahid says, I think learning English phrases or verbs are important to understand English. Your speech is very understandable. Thanks a lot. Uh, I think he's gone again. Uh, can you guys hear me now, though? I'm sure you guys can still hear me. Uh, yeah, Vahid, um, thank you so much. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, we teach. Vahid, what I want you to do, though, is I want you to find a way to practice your English. I want you to find a way to um, maybe make friends in your community, have other teachers or friends. Uh, well, you're not a teacher, you're a geodist. Um, I want you to find other people to practice with. If that's not possible, I'm sure there are English online classes like Jock has English classes online. Oh. My dad has online classes and practice with that. Learning by heart. Is there a synonym for this word? Learning by heart. Um, yeah. Um, I'm sure there is. I can't think of it now, but I'll get back to you if I hit. Um, now, Megan said, do you mean teaching situational English? Now, Jock, back to you. Um, this is a great idea, and I see more and more people do it. Um, for example, in Busan, in one of the cities in Korea, I have a friend who has like a teaching school. Um, they have a big apartment in Busan, and students that want to go to Canada or the U.S., they go to that apartment and they live in that apartment. They cook together. Yeah. They practice all these situations, like you said, um, uh, like you said, Megum. And uh, I think that is a way, even for myself, when I did summer camps, we did it at a university and they've got like a fake movie theater, a fake um, uh, uh, airport, a fake hotel. And the students have to go in and practice these situations. Okay, Naza says, I'm just eager to get further information about this new pedagogy. Um, Naza, I quickly want to say, I've been talking about flipped classrooms with my boss, and he is very against it. So there are many teachers that say that the data does not support flipped classrooms, but I like the idea of preparing my students before. So I like the idea of students just preparing before they come to class so they can practice these skills. Okay, now, I've been talking a lot. Back to you, Jock. Okay, so um, you've been doing, a, you've got this idea to start doing it, but unfortunately now it's COVID. So now once again, you've got to, um, you've okay. got to focus and, you know, redirect. You have to course direct. What did I say? Course direct? That's when you have to like move around and try something new. Um, so, um, now you have to course direct. There's another word for it. What are you doing now? And what are you looking for in the future? What do you want to do in the future? Okay. Thanks, Eric. Um, yes, I think the main thing is that, you know, uh, <laughs> before I say this, and I think a lot of the viewers will agree that, you know, COVID-19, when all of us look at it, they they look at it and they basically said that, you know, at the end of 2019, you said how horrible 2019 was. And, you know, looking at this year, we all need to owe 2019 an apology, which <laughs> I think is very true because it's been rough. Yeah, it's been and a crazy it's affected, year. It's affected everybody. But I think the, the people that it's affected the most has been people like myself in the travel industry. Mm. Um, now, lucky for me, um, you know, the... I've learned how to adapt through all these previous um, things over the last four years. And then um, we went back to the drawing bo uh, board as soon as South Africa went into lockdown. And we realized that, um, you know, why didn't we just go online? You know, everybody's going online. Why don't we go online? And we thought about it. And, you know, guess what we did, Eric? We did our research again, uh, checked everything out. and. Uh, we came up with the idea of doing conversational English classes online. But what we want to do when it comes to conversational English online that makes it um, different is the fact that we solely focus on conversational English. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not here to teach grammar. We're not here to teach, um, you know, reading skills, those type of things. For us, it's purely about speaking and building the confidence to do that. And um, we are actually in, at the moment, still busy building these courses from the previous um, products we have. Um, 
but to transition online as with any business is a bit difficult because the last thing you want to do is just send people a bunch of word files you know you want to make it as effective and user friendly as possible so when we looked at our target market who are we going to target it would mostly be i don't like using this word that much um generation z um, you know, the people post-millennium that, uh, post-millennial that were born like the, uh, um, you know, students that are on their phones a lot, students that, you know, have, uh, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, um, Instagram accounts that are quite quick and easy. So we've had to rethink our whole strategy of doing it as fast and quick and effective as possible. And, um, you know, it's, it's presented a bunch of challenges, but it's really stripped it down to the core. Basically, getting to the point where you say, you know what, I believe what this guy says, let's do it. Da, da, da. One, two, three, click, go, I'm there. Um, and transitioning everything to be mobile friendly has been a massive challenge. Mm-hmm. But how can I say, we're about 99% there. Okay. It's just finishing off the, the last things. And um, I think with everything, um, taking longer in lockdown you know if we just um if i just look at south africa um service delivery uh, has slowed down a lot um things tend to take a bit longer but i've also realized that um if you do wait a little bit extra it it's it's worth the wait um and i mean we've got um ideas of launch specials getting mm-hmm. people who are interested to be um you know like test or pilot students get okay uh, well I- i'm ideas. going to pause yeah. you there because i think that goes into marketing territory that we can talk about i just quickly want to focus on this yeah i i you know i constantly bring this up guys um um I, I think we're we're very fortunate as teachers that well one of the benefits of COVID is that now we are forced to move online and I've been promoting this too because as teachers we need to learn these skills to teach online and it's also a great way we need to start presenting our our teaching online and also how we present ourselves online and also whatever content you put out video or if you're making worksheets that is it's very easy to um, multiply it to to copy it and to send it out to as many people as possible so you can build your reach and you can touch more students in um, now um, I've got a very uh, and we're going to continue about that because I'm so happy that you're starting to build towards the future it doesn't matter when you start but you're doing online classes and you're building material for the future and you've got an idea of how to promote it now very quickly um uh, migam says lol learning english in the fake restaurant fake bank fake hospital was a thing in korea back in the day well i'm sorry migam that i'm a dinosaur but sometimes it's still fun to to uh play in a fake uh movie uh, theater so, yeah so, sorry eric my my first and my second job just to comment on i think it's yeah. Migam. Yeah. You comment on what she said. My first and my second uh, job that I did uh, was at one of these um, after-school uh, English villages. So mm. I'm an expert, and I think that also influenced my idea about um, situational learning of English. Um, yeah. The university I worked at, one of the departments also had this uh, big thing where university students could interact. Uh, so yeah, but uh, those are a lot of fun. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, Gloria, you said the sound is off. Is the sound off? Can everyone hear me? I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, it's, uh, you know, trying to figure everything out again. Oh, there we go. This is going to look better now, too. Um, so, um, but uh, actually, and Elsa said she also didn't know what a flip classroom is. Um, but uh, obviously, we talked about that. Now, um, I've got a great question here. I'm very happy about this question. Uh, Mo uh, Nien. I always struggle to say that name. It's it's a great um, Vietnamese uh, family name. Nien. I think it's Nien. Um, sorry, I am late. You're never late. You're always on time. The only one who's late is uh, Christina. And I, I put on a really nice shirt and she never, she never recognizes that. Um, so you're not late. Um, so Moat says, um, when speaking, my students often translate it into their mother tongue first 
and then into English. So, so they, they, let's say they've got a sentence they want to say and they say it in their mother tongue and then they translate it into English and they speak too slowly. How can I improve their speaking skill? Thanks. Okay. Um, actually, I, I think Megan might have a very, uh, might have a good answer to this. Uh, Megan, what's your answer? I want you to put it in there. I know you've got a good answer. But first, Jock, what do you think? So, this is a problem, you know, someone is, so th th they're learning English, but first they translate it and then they say it. What is, uh, how can we, how can we solve it? Okay. Um, the first thing that I would do is, um, is I sound like a broken record because it sounds like one of the same that I do with my kids in uh, China as well is um, I've basically got three rules. Um, the first rule I have is speak English to everybody, even your grandma. Now, the reason why I say this is used traditionally, um, you know, if you come from a non-English speaking country, the odds of your grandma being fluent in English are not that good. And a good way to teach somebody is to actually become a, a teacher. And you have to know the content really well to teach somebody something. And so... That's my first piece of advice is, you know, speak English to everybody. Your dog, call your dog in English when you're out in public, etc. Um, you know, and even go as far as to speaking English to your grandma. Number two, um, my second piece of advice that I feel is critical, and I mean critical, is to watch movies and series. Now, I know you wrote a book about friends some time ago and understanding the um the meaning what was it called yeah the, yeah, the meanings of everything of the, of they say which is a fantastic which is a fantastic guide mm -hmm. i'd actually use that second to what i would suggest people do now, i know in a lot of countries um you know uh, subtitles are very popular but my thing <laughs> my thing is turn subtitles off i don't want to see subtitles at all the reason why and you'll know this, Eric, as well, living in Korea for 10 years. And let's again take it in the reverse, like I did with the Arabic thing earlier, is learning another language through uh, listening to what you can understand and visual, like body language. So if you're watching a movie, and I've done this countless times, Korean movies, Hyundai, the um, tidal wave movie, I watched um, end, of the, uh, end of the Earth movies in Chinese, and I can understand what's going on by simply understanding limited vocabulary, but then also watching body language. Because in my mind, communication is not just words. It's the physical interactions, our facial expressions. Everything contributes to the way we communicate. And the end goal of communication is understanding what the other person is trying to say. But we do that through the means of language. Now, if we turn the subtitles off, we, our brains are not going to de facto to the, um, to the subtitles. We're actually going to focus on what is being said, listen to what is being said, the way it's being said, the speed it's being said at, um, how it's used in which context, context but as a guide to that as well, we can also see from the body language if um, the person, like let's say the actor says, are um, like, are you serious? Or like, are you serious? We can see from his facial expression and from his tone, even though you don't know what are you, what the phrase are you serious means, you know that um, that will help at the end of the day. Mm. The last piece of advice that I also give is that, you know, we live in a global society where you have a ton of people um, who, who are expats living in your city, most probably. Become friends with them. The reason why is, as we said earlier with culture shock, when you go to a new country, you don't know how anything works. You're a bit nervous. If you become friends with, um, if you become friends with the uh, um, foreigners who speak English, but like real friends, not like friends to learn English, you know, like you really want to help them. That is a really good way of practicing because you're doing most of the time you'll be doing translations, you'll be helping them out. And eventually it'll get to the point where that person say, or you'll ask that person, look, I want to learn some English lessons. And they'll say, you know what, Saturday afternoons, coffee, 
Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quickly going to jump in there because I think this is the, 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 those are really good tips. Um, Moat, um, I hope I'm saying your name right, Moat, or um, it, am I pronouncing it right? Migam says she uses a lot of fillers. So uh, fillers uh, in but uh, when when she when she learns and when she uses English and uh, um, she also watches a lot of uh, vlogs and she picks up expressions from them. But he here's the thing, Moat. Um, it is very important for students to practice English as English as a new language. And um, uh, Vihad, this is also for you. It is so bad that if students translate it into their mother language or uh, you know their native tongue, and then they go back to English, it takes up too much time, and they make many mistakes. Um, a, a common mistake I have with my students is because you've got these English words that um, they also use in Korean. But when you write it in Korean, the pronunciation is different. So then the students, because it's natural to them, they use the Korean pronunciation for these words, which is wrong. For example, a lot of my su students would say, how about new? Right. How about new? Because that's basically how it sounds uh, when, when they would do it or Instead of restaurant, they say restaurant. Instead of uh, because that's how they write it. Instead of stadium, they say stadium. So, am I saying it right? A stadium. So um, the, the the thing is, you've got to tell your students that number one, it's going to be very slow if you translate it to your mother language and then back. And also, you are not learning English. You are just practicing your mother language and you're translating. It's like romanization. I, I made a, a big mistake when I first started studying Korean, and my Korean isn't very good, but uh, it's because when I first started studying, I thought, you know what, I don't need to be able to read Korean, I just need want to speak it. So basically what I did was, I wrote the, uh, the expression I wanted to learn, I wrote down the English, and I wrote down how you would say it in English without using, the, uh, Korea, uh, without using Hangul. And that was so detrimental to my learning of Korean because now I was just practicing English instead of learning yeah, Korean. Yeah. And it held me back. So, um, Moat, what you have to tell your students is um, you are only practicing Vietnamese. You are not learning English. You will never improve unless you only focus on English because you are just practicing Vietnamese. So tell your students they are making too many mistakes they are too slow and they are not learning English if they are translating it that way. Now, um, that is just the reasons that you have to tell your students. Now, how do you solve that problem with your students? Uh, the first thing is don't let them write things down. Let them sometimes get them just to say things. Now, sometimes I, I get my students to write things down because it helps them. It helps them feel secure. But if you give them too much time, they will do it. They will. That's what they will revert to. They write it down or they will think too long. So what you want to do is you want to speed them up. So instead of giving them a lot of time, give them a countdown. Say, listen, guys, I want you to only use the English. Don't try and go to Vietnamese and then to English. It's too slow. Um, yeah, there are some things I also want to say. But first, NASA says students should also look up difficult words in an English dictionary. Right. Uh, that is one way of learning it. Uh, Viad says, is it possible to understand 100% um, English movies? Uh, what's the average understanding enough to catch the meaning? Um, you know, it depends what type of movie it is. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's very quick. Um, so, Naza, uh, uh, not Naza, sorry, Viad, uh, watch movies that you are interested in or topics and then Perhaps write down how much do you know, you know, what words were oh, difficult. Yes. Rewatch it. Uh, if, if you use it with subtitles, rewatch it in English and see if you understand everything. And then finally watch it without any subtitles and see how That's it goes. That's also a way of doing it. Yeah. 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 Um, Naza said, uh, yeah, so you use these words and use it in context. Great advice. Guys, if you give words to your students, ask them to make sentences with it or how do they use it in context. Viad says, uh, many useful things on improving English. I hope it helps. Moats, I'm so sorry. Usually, um, I, I'm going to think about this and I'll write down some ideas for next week for doing that. But, Jock, I'm sorry. I'm talking so much. 
No, um, no, no, no. I'm keeping it, uh, Eric. I'm keeping an eye on all the comments we're getting here. There's some great comments coming through. It's so fantastic. It's really yeah. Topic. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for the questions and also the correspondence. Megum, um, you're the star today. I think you've sent the most questions. Um, I had a Spanish teacher who only used Spanish in the classroom. Instead, he gave us expressions of how to ask questions like, ¿Cómo se dice en español? Are songs a good resource for in, um, increasing fluency? Yes. yes Jacques, yes, um, so yes. what is your opinion? On that. Definitely. I think, let's see, that's Gloria. Gloria. No, yeah. um, yes, I think it's a fantastic way. And the reason being is you can see it when you teach kindergartners as well. I mean, why do we all know the ABC? Do we know the ABC song or kids know the ABC song because it's A, B, C, D? Or do they know it because it's A, B, C, D? Da, da, da. Our creative side of our mind. Um, tends to help us learn important things. You know, when I was younger, I actually had a problem with learning um, and especially like lots of information. So, you know, my um, my teacher at the time taught me spider diagrams. Eric, do you know spider, spider yeah. diagrams? Yeah. And what the teacher also taught me was how to use spider diagrams and color. So. I'd basically sit with this whole page. It'd just be like about this big, right? And I'd have like a whole chapter on this page, but each page would have like a little stick figure doing something. And I'd remember the stick figure. That's the creative side of my mind. And I could remember anything and tap in and out of that. And song does exactly the same because it stimulates the creative side and it takes the pressure of our um, like more mathematical. I always forget which one is right and left. It takes the, the pressure off the uh, left hand side to actually focus on doing that so songs are an amazing pop songs especially uh, an amazing an amazing way i, of I, I, I think and what i also cool. like about um gloria about using songs and the reason they work you know um uh the other thing is chants are another one S using songs uh, you can also put movement to the song so you can add some TPR to that too. Um, Migam, that thing about a Spanish teacher only using Spanish. In many schools, they say, okay, only use. So uh, Migam actually said, Eric, do you remember the summer camp? Of course I, uh, I do. Uh, I did a summer camp um, last year. I don't think it's going to happen this year. It's so sad. But they said only use English. Don't use any Korean. I slightly disagree because sometimes if you're learning a language instead of wait uh, if you just explain like something quickly to me in english then i understand the grammar point or i understand what it means right so um if i had to study some korean right and as, as somebody would say uh momo get that uh, and i'll be like okay they just explain it in korean to me it takes me a long time but then they say oh it's uh uh, it, in, in English, it would just mean like, oh, that would be good. Okay. If you put that at the end of a sentence, then I'm like, oh, okay. I understand. So you can, I think use 95% of English, but, uh, if you want to explain something quickly, just so that students grasp it, then I switch. Or if I want to do some instructions that the students don't get, then I switch to Korean and I use that. Um, Gloria, thank you so much. You love singing. I bet you do. Uh, now, um, everyone, we're going on for a bit longer. I want to give Jock uh, an opportunity to talk about what he wants to talk about. Um, so, Jock, uh, what would you like to talk about as a, as a final type of topic or final couple of topics? Well, uh, Eric, I know it's 9 p.m. with you, uh, where you're at. It's 3 p.m. with me, so I'm good to go. If these guys want to keep on asking questions, I mean, I, I'm trying... I know I talk long, but I try and answer to the best of my ability, so the more they can keep on asking. Well, I, I think I, I think you know I really enjoyed this chat. It, apart from me messing up and clicking around, I'm sorry about that, <laughs> guys. Fine. So I think you know that halted our momentum for maybe five to ten minutes. But otherwise, yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed this chat because you know it gives us a chance to like talk about this. But I know people want to mm -hmm. enjoy their Sundays too. So guys. If you have any final questions or comments, please put it in the comments below. Um, and uh, uh, but Jock, um, you know, 
I, I think, so we talked about how we want to prepare for the future and the ideas we have to not only teach, but, uh, to, how to teach online and perhaps making products. Because, you know, we are teachers, but we can reach a wider audience and we can perhaps get some, uh, some extra money from working on the internet. So, um, yeah, uh, what are your plans for the future? How, how do you see your channel developing and, you know, creating those products? Well, I, um, well, if, you know, anybody watching... Oh, talk about your see... channel. What do you do on your channel, by the way? Okay, so on, um, well, I use my channel primarily as um, to showcase South Africa, uh, but short snippets of things I find interesting. I, there are one or two of those, you know, like um, Shutterstock style videos, but the rest is basically me trying to show the real South Africa. Um, and what I also do is I upload bits of information every now and then. So earlier this year, we, act we actually uploaded uh, 10 lessons mm. where you can uh, view, where you can basically interact with uh, 10 lessons from our 35 lesson um, workbook that we've designed um, and um, yeah it's basically like a video where you can interact and I give bits of advice regarding it as well mm. um, so I do those type of things I'm currently using it as a platform to market the um, the online things that we're doing and uh, it looks like you know that's gaining pretty good traction as well um, but uh, other than that, I mean, we also try on um, uh, um, uh, Facebook and so social media is basically the best spot for us to do what we do. Um, and uh, like I said, we said earlier, I use the skills that I've developed as a vlogger throughout my time in Korea with, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing things on this channel. But uh, now that, you know, I'm not out and about and I'm stuck at home, I'm trying to push out a lot more quant quality content out there that people mm. find interesting and they agree with or whatever so well, that's well, what i do on my channel the, the beauty about teaching is that you know it's a transferable skill that you can that you can put on the internet you, you know um, um, like you said teachers are talkers and we're communicators now we just have to kind of focus on that for me uh, uh, oh and by the way uh, oh yeah um, your channel's name is explore english i will explore english right I'll put it in the yeah. description below. So first we go. Uh, Elsa says, I always translate with um, uh, translate with elementary students. Perhaps it isn't the best option, intermediate and advanced. I give them tips so they can reach the meaning. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just very yeah. quick to, to make them understand. Uh, but Elsa, I, I, I want to say that, you know, encourage those young learners to use some phrases. If it's something simple like, oh, teacher, I don't understand. Um, or if it's a simple sentence, tell them, I want you to use English for that. Or if it's something easy that you tell them, you can also start using more. But if it's quicker and more efficient, uh, you know, use Spanish. Uh, no, Portuguese, right, Elsa? I'm, I, I think you said Portuguese. Um, tell me if I'm wrong or right. Okay, so that's when I would say if it's very easy, encourage them to use English and you too. Um Elsa says, I had no questions, only learning with your great experience. You always give the best compliments. <laughs> Gloria, I would like to subscribe to your channel. Yes, please, Gloria, check out Explore English. I'll put it in the uh, um, description. And then um, Vihad asks, uh, add, if possible, some dialect understanding advice. Um, well, um, it's it's actually, it's kind of difficult. That's where you need to, um, Vihad, let me tell you something. Um most people are learning English not to speak with native speakers. They are learning English to speak to other uh, non-native speakers. So if you travel to a country where they don't speak English, you're going to be using English with other people that are non-native speakers. Now, the majority of those people will speak a similar type of English. It, uh, like in, um, so they will speak usually an American uh, uh, with an American pronunciation. So what I would suggest is do not focus on dialects because dialects, it's like a small area where they speak a certain dialect and a dialect or 
um, you know, a, 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 a different way of speaking. Rather focus on just almost the received pronunciation of English with when it comes to either speaking with a normal American accent or you can speak with a more English accent um, because lots of people in China, for example, have English, have more like a British sounding English. So oh, there we go. Explore English. There is his site. Um, so I hope everybody understands that. Don't worry too much. Uh, let me give you a short story about this. Um, I have a lot of friends that are from England and they use different, vo like very strange slang. And that slang is not understandable <laughs> to anybody outside of their small community. And it doesn't yeah. matter if you know that or not. Rather focus on the 80% of the language that you should know. Okay, uh, Jock, uh, yes, what's next? Yes. So, sorry, can you repeat that again? You broke up there. Oh, I just said what's next. Um, uh, oh, okay, okay. Um, what's next? Um, I think that... Um, like I said, we we're we're building towards this this um, product mm. and um, you know moving online. Mm. And of course, the things are interconnected. So you know, once it's safe to travel again, we'll go back to doing the conversational English tours. And mm. I just want to say what was great about what we said in this discussion as well is one of the thing is like immersion. I think those mm. those camps that uh, Miguel spoke about as well, mm. uh, Miguel spoke about as well, were like immersion camps where you mm. immerse yourself and. That's kind of what we're trying to do as well. Now, um, I think that um, our two products will be interconnected. Mm. So let's say you can start off by doing the online English, which of course will be a lot cheaper than, let's say, flying to South Africa, paying accommodation, food, etc., mm. and see how it works. And then from there, you know, decide if you want to do it. Mm. Um, and you know, but the thing is, we are extremely confident in what we do. In what we do, yeah. and I'm not saying this to brag or marketing, but we really are because you know we've done our due diligence when it comes to this. Mm. And um, you know, things that we've decided with the online market of uh, the online marketing, the online products that we are um, busy putting together, um, we are so confident that you know. You know, we decided we'll basically the first week of the lessons we're giving away for free, mm. and it took us a lot of time to to decide. Because I mean, if you think about mm -hmm. it, basically in the age of control or copy uh, copy cut paste, people can copy cut cut and paste everything you do, um, and <laughs> we decided that this is the best this is the best way to go is to get people to actually see what you do before they pay you know eric i'd rather go to a store and try on a shirt before purchasing the same shirt online get here it's too small i need to refit it and send it back again right so um, you you're basically yeah. giving them a trial right so so a trial for them to try yeah. out um but it's not sorry eric mm. uh, it's not sorry sorry man it's it's no not worries. only just a, a, a content trial it's an actual class trial as well mm. so for like a 25 minute session you know if you sign up and you go through the work that we do you know for a week and you book a class um that first class is free and it's basically for you to check out you know what explore english is about because mm. once you purchase we want you to make sure that you are doing the right thing and it's not it's not just this random fly by night thing. We've spent a lot of time focusing on how the best way to teach conversational okay. English. Okay, yeah, exactly. I, I, I wanted to say this before. Viad and uh, uh, if anybody else wants to check out Explore English, they've got a lot of series on conversational topics, how to do it. I was really impressed with the dialogues that they have. It's really good dialogues and they, they explain it very well. And uh, that's the thing. Portuguese, I was right, Alsa. I do pay attention. Um, uh, I'm glad Christina isn't here. She would have told me I, I don't pay attention. Galina, hi. Uh, as usual, good topic for us teachers. I don't understand slang words either if everybody spoke like you, Eric. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think uh, wh what I hear from Jock is I really enjoy that class. Because I've lost my class, I say class now, so uh, a lot of people complain about that. Um, 
actually, oh, oh, um, Jock, I just want to say the thing is, you know, um, I, I, I think you're exactly right. You're very confident in your product. And we should be. I think, you know, you're not going to trust someone that's not confident. And now you're also exactly. giving, you're giving value first. Um, you're giving people value first and saying, listen, this is what you can learn. Check this out. And then you can try mm -hmm. the classes, which is very good. Um, uh, I think what, what, uh, one thing that I would think about is always uh, start small. So um, yes. Yes. Be before, before you bring out the big product, perhaps you can, uh, if, if you can just sell something small, like a booklet, like a... <clears throat> you know, uh, a, a short class or something. If uh, once we can sell a, s a small product, then we can focus on the bigger ones. So of course you are going to give the product, uh, you, you know, you're going to give value first and then you're going to take, but um, monetize first, get something that you can sell. Um, yeah, I, I think this is, this is important. I wish I did something like that earlier. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I definitely agree. Um, you know, the thing is, is if you're going, I think, how can I say this? If you're going to talk big, you need something to back it as well. And I think that just stepping straight in, you need to go through these growing and learning pains. And, you know, there we were four years back thinking of starting a language school. And now I'm giving away things online for free over the internet. You know, mm. life changes, and that's the beauty of it. That's the brilliance of it. Mm. That that makes it so much fun is that we don't know where we're going to be. You know, in five years' time, I might be, you know, teaching English to artificial intelligence. Or, I don't know. But well, well, I fun, I, I think know? it's uh, virtual reality is another great thing that we're going to look at. Oh but, yes. But, oh, oh yes. yes. Um, Jock, I think. Um, uh, well, Elsa says I went to the beach this morning. Elsa, that's um, I'm so happy you did. I went swimming at um, at a, in a valley. If you were on my Instagram, you would have seen my photos. Uh, Jock, um, l let me ask you, what are you going to do uh, for the rest of today before we say goodbye? Because uh, I think we're almost going to finish. Everybody, put in your final comments and or final quick things. We're going to finish soon. This is actually the longest live stream uh, we've done so far. So I'm going to wrap it up soon. Elsa says, thank you, Eric. I'm always worried about the fact of not being native. As you know, Elsa, you have nothing to be worried about. You know, I've, I've yeah. spoken to you so much and you've got such a great grasp of the language. If only you were more confident, you, you know, fake, fake some confidence. That's what I usually do. Um, so, Jock, uh, yeah. Oh, what are you doing for the rest of the day? Everybody else, put your comments in. We're almost going to finish. Uh, honestly, Eric, it's Father's Day. I think my wife's listening in as well. So, yeah. you know, she sounds listening in as well. So, you know, we're probably just going to um, relax and just try and do as little as possible. Mm -hmm. Parenting keeps you quite busy. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, get an early night and then Monday back to work. Um, it's winter in South Africa at the moment. So, um, you know, winter in South Africa is not winter in Korea. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like freezing. Uh, so it's it's pretty nice it's pretty nice weather at the moment. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're doing. Um, Eric, I just want to um, before some of these questions come in. Thanks to you for you know having me. This has been a lot of fun, hmm. um, and I've actually enjoyed the questions and I actually learned you know about um, uh, flip classes. Hmm. Um, I also want to say that you know um, if people would like to message me as well. Um, you know, they're more than welcome to, even if it's through you, to get to me. Mm. Um, and, you know, we've got this little thing we call the LBOT, which is the little book of texting. Mm. And, you know, uh, if anybody's interested um, in uh, messaging me or sending me an email, I'll gladly just reply with this little book. It's like a nice um, DIY project. The book's about this big. Mm. Especially if you're stuck in like a, a lockdown situation or a stay at home situation. And it's cool because you can put it in your wallet and you can check like, for instance, TTYS is talk to you soon. Mm. We, for instance, know like OMG, like, oh my gosh, oh my God, or whichever. Um, so it's like a small booklet we designed. So I mean, if people want to send me a message back, um, mm. 
you know, and get to know a bit more about my takes on conversational English. Mm. Or, you know, they just want the free book, that's fine. Just pop me a mail. I'd really appreciate um, uh, it. So I'm going to... Yeah, th thank you so much, Jock. It was a, it was so nice chatting with you. And uh, we can do this again in the future. Um, uh, I'd, I'd love to have you on again in the future because it's so nice chatting with you. Um, now, I'm going to put your... Uh, I'm going to put your link in the description please try it out and jock uh i'll show you here's his uh, email if you want to send him and find out about that book now um first i want to say galina i'm so sorry that you're not feeling well um hope it's just a call me to stay stay in bed drink lots of fluids and um if you have medicine take the medicine just take all the medicine that's what i do i hope you feel much better soon galina uh, let's go through Alsa. It's a pleasure. Vihad, uh, it's nice having you. Gloria, Migam, you're a star. You um, you shared so much. Mom, I'm going to call you soon. <laughs> uh, oh, and by the way, guys, I'm wearing shorts. Don't worry, I'm not here in my boxes. I'm wearing shorts. It's just hot in here. Um, uh, yeah, uh, did I miss anyone? I think that's. Uh, let me quickly, Gloria. Moat, Moat, thank you so much for your questions, guys. It's such a pleasure. Um, having you all here, Tatiana, um, you started things off, Martin was here earlier, the only one that wasn't here was Christina, I'll talk to her later, oh, it was Christina's birthday, I didn't even, a, a couple of days ago, uh, and Nazar, Nazar, I will never forget you, thank you so much everyone, uh, Jock, thank you so much for coming on, um, yeah, everyone, thanks for having me. Everyone, have a fantastic day. Um, enjoy your day. Happy Father's Day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.